Our next student is Brittany Roberts, who is studying sociology here at Portland State University. Brittany's thesis is titled, Undocumented Latino Students, Bridges and Barriers to Higher Education. Brittany, take it away. In 2010, I interviewed Juanes, an 18-year-old Latino male. As a senior in high school, Juanes was a 4.0 student. His goal after graduation was to pursue a degree in political science. Juanes was devastated to discover that he could not attend college because he was undocumented. Juanes became depressed and confessed to considering suicide as an alternative to what he considered a dead-end future. The experiences of undocumented Latino youth like Juanes are not those typically depicted when politicians, the media, and other authorities debate immigration. This is why I designed my study. Catherine, I see what you went through. <clears throat> this is why I designed my study with the intent of recording the feelings and perspectives of undocumented youth. The purpose of my research was to identify bridges and barriers that undocumented Latino students recognize in their pursuit of higher education. If we did not understand these, these point, uh, factors from the point of view of those affected, we can't improve the educational prospects. 16 undocumented Latino students identified the lack of a social security number as the first barrier. This barrier limits work and school opportunities. It also prohibits access to financial aid, loans, and most scholarships. Money is another barrier. The cost of a college education, coupled with the consequences of no social security number, requires students to pay for school out of pocket. Lastly, discrimination and the threat or fear of deportation are physically and emotionally exhaustive barriers. Now, these barriers were not unexpected, but what I found in my research that was surprising was immigrant optimism. This means that students, because they value education as opportunity, are able to motivate themselves and persevere in the face despite these barriers. Subjects also credited deferred action for childhood arrivals as a bridge to higher education. This policy allows greater security and stability in the lives of these students. Finally, resources such as family, mentors, and community programs were identified as bridges. It is important to understand that while these bridges are significant, they do not cancel out the barriers. By limiting and denying undocumented Latino youth access to higher education, we are stripping these individuals of their potential. We're also denying the United States educated and productive citizens. Juanes is a prime example. This population of students is bicultural, bilingual, and resilient. Students like Juanes, who are able to overcome these things and attend college anyways, should be assets to our communities. If we want to benefit from students like Juanes, we need to improve educational access and break down the barriers that are maintaining a dead-end future. Thank you very much.